Some of the gopis were factually detained from going to Krishna by their husbands and were locked up by force within their rooms. Being unable to go to Krishna, they began to meditate upon his transcendental form by closing their eyes. When all, when all the gopis assembled before Krishna, he began to speak to them welcoming them as well as discouraging them by word jugglery. Krishna is the supreme speaker. And when Krishna began to re receive them very officially, showing all kinds of etiquette, they were surprised. He was treating them as ordinary society women. Therefore, they began to smile amongst themselves, and they very eagerly listened to Krishna talk in that way. Vrindavan, you are very fortunate and you are very dear to me. I am so pleased that you have come here and I hope everything is well in Vrindavan. Now please order me. What can I do for you? What is the purpose of your coming here in the dead of night? Kindly take your seats and let me know what I can do for you. You must know that it is late at night and the forest is very dangerous. I think therefore you are taking a great risk in coming here. Please turn back immediately without delay. It does not look very well for young girls and boys to remain together at night. So now that you've seen the beautiful atmosphere of Vrindavan Forest, please turn back and engage in the faithful service of your respective husbands. Oh, Krishna, you are so cruel. You should not talk like that. We are full-fledged, surrender souls. Please accept us. It is not worthy of your position to treat us like this. We have come to you, leaving everything. As women, we are certainly satisfied when our hearts are engaged in the activities of family affairs. But our hearts have already been stolen by you. We can no longer engage them in family affairs. Besides that, you are asking us repeatedly to return home. And that is a very appropriate instruction. But unfortunately, we have been stunned here. Our legs have no power to move a step from your lotus feet. Dear Krishna, you are known as Hari. You destroy all the miseries of the living entities. We have come to you with the hope that we may completely devote and dedicate our lives to your service. We are simply begging to be engaged in your service. We do not wish you to accept us as your wives. Simply accept us as your maidservants. Dear Krishna, we have simply been captivated by seeing you with earrings and with tilak, and by seeing your beautiful face <coughs> covered with scattered hair and your extraordinary smile. Hey Madhava, if you accuse us of prostitution, then we can only ask, where is that woman? Within these three worlds, who is not captivated by your beauty and the rhythmic song vibrated by your transcendental flute? Upon hearing the anxious plea of the gopis, the Supreme Personality of Godhead began to smile. When Krishna looked at the faces of the gopis, the beauty of their faces became a hundred times enhanced. When he was enjoying them in their midst, he appeared just like the full moon surrounded by millions of shining stars. Thus, the Supreme Personality of Godhead <coughs>
surrounded by hundreds of gopis and decorated with a flower garland of many colors, began to wander within the Vrindavan forest, sometimes singing to himself and sometimes singing with the gopis. In this way, both the Lord and the gopis reached the cool sandy bank of the Jamuna, where there were lilies and lotus flowers. In such a transcendental atmosphere, both the gopis and Krishna began to enjoy with one another. When Krishna suddenly disappeared from the company of the gopis, they began to search for him every place. After not finding him anywhere, they became afraid and almost mad after him. They were simply thinking of the pastimes of Krishna in great love and affection. Being absorbed in thought, they experienced loss of memory, and with dampened eyes, they began to see the pastimes of Krishna. Oh, banyan tree, have you seen the son of Maharaj Nanda passing this way, laughing and playing his flute? He has stolen our hearts and has gone away. Dear Champaka flower tree, dear Naga flower tree, have you seen the younger brother of Balaram? He has, he has disappeared because of our pride. Oh, Tulsi, you are much beloved by Lord Krishna because your leaves are always at his lotus feet. Oh, Malati, dear Malika flower, oh, Jasmine, you all must have been touched by Krishna while he was passing this way after giving us transcendental enjoyment. Oh, mango tree, dear jackfruit, oh, paradise honey trees, oh, blackberry, dear bale tree, oh, tree of kadamba flowers, you are all very pious trees to be living on the banks of the Yamuna. You must have seen Krishna pass through here. Please, kindly tell us which way he has gone. After searching for Krishna here and there, when the gopis became fatigued, they began to talk like mad women. They could only satisfy themselves by imitating the different pastimes of Krishna. Now don't be afraid of torrents of rain or severe hurricanes. I will save you. You rascal, Kalia! I will punish you severely. You must leave this place. I have descended on this earth to punish all kinds of mischief. Bumi, Rita, Sita, my dear cows, please come. <coughs> oh, Krishna, you play the flute so nicely. Oh, here is the impression of the marks of the lotus feet of Krishna. The flag, the lotus flower, the tiger, the thunderbolt are so clearly visible here. Oh, whose footprints are these? They are beside the footprints of the son of Maharaj Nanda. We must understand that this particular gopi served Krishna with greater affectionate love than ourselves. Therefore, although he has left us, he could not leave her company. Oh, they are the footprints of my Pranasaki, Sri Radhe. Oh, I am so happy for her. Oh, friends, just see. At this particular spot, there is no footprints of that gopi. It appears that because there were some pinpricks from the dried grass, Krishna took Radharani on his shoulder. Oh, she is so dear to him. Krishna must have picked some flowers in this very spot to satisfy Radharani. Because on this very spot, where he stood erect, he picked up flowers from the high branches of this tree. And we can only see half the footprints. She must have taken Krishna deep into the forest and told him, My dear Krishna, I am now very tired. I cannot go any further. 
Please carry me wherever you like. When Krishna was spoken to in this way, he might have told Radharani, all right, better get on my shoulders. But immediately Krishna must have disappeared. And now Radharani must be lamenting for him. My dear lover, my dearest, you were so fine and so powerful. Where have you gone? I am nothing but your most obedient maidservant. Please come and be with me again. Krishna, however, is not coming. He must be watching from a distant place and enjoying her sorrow.
beauty, your glance excels the world of the finest, most perfectly formed lotus flower within the autumn pond. O bestower of benedictions, you are killing your maidservants who have given themselves to you freely without any price. Isn't this murder? Thank <laughs> you. 
prayers of all who bow down to them. They are worshipped by Lord Brahma, and they are the most beautiful ornament of the earth. In times of danger, they are the appropriate object of meditation. O oh, destroyer of the distress suffered by our minds, please place those lotus feet upon our hearts. about Vedic knowledge, 
what is right and what is wrong, we therefore put a question to you, and since you are very learned, you can answer it properly. Some people reciprocate only with those who show honor to them, while on the contrary, others will reciprocate even if the other shows no honor. Yet another class will not reciprocate with anyone. Please, Krishna, properly explain to us into which of these categories do you yourself belong. My dear friends, persons who simply reciprocate the loving doings of another party are just like merchants. They give in their loving affairs as much as they get from other parties. Practically, there is no question of love. It is simply business dealings, and it is self-interested or self-centered. Better the second class of men, who love in spite of the opposite party's contrariness. Even without a tinge of love, loving affairs are better than the merchants. Um, since love can be seen when the father or mother love their children, in spite of their child's neglect, the third class neither reciprocates nor neglects. They can be further divided into two classes. One is self-satisfied, who do not, one is self-satisfied, who do not require anyone's love. Um, and they are called Atmaram, which means they are observed in the thought of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and they, they do not care whether one loves them or not. But another class Another class are ungrateful men. They are not. They are called the callous, the men in the group of revolt, the revolt against the superior persons. For instance, a son, in spite of receiving all kinds of things from loving parents, may be callous and not reciprocate. Those in the class are generally known as gurudrohi, which means. They receive favors from the parents or spiritual master and yet neglect them. My dear friends, you might be grieved by the words and acts. You must know that sometimes I do not reciprocate my dealings with, with my devotees. It appears that my devotees are very much attached to me, and sometimes I do not reciprocate their feelings properly in order to increase their love for me more and more. If I can very easily be approached, they might think Krishna is so easily available. So, sometimes, I do not respond. If a person has no money, but after some time accumulates some wealth and then loses it, he will think about the loss of property 24 hours a day. Similarly, in order to increase the love of my devotees, sometimes I appear to be lost to them. And instead of forgetting me, they feel their loving sentiments for me increase. My dear friends, do not think that for a moment that I have been dealing with you just like ordinary devotees. I know who you are. You have forsaken all kinds of social and religious obligations. You have given up all connection with your parents without caring for social con convention and relig ob religious obligations. You have come to me and loved me and I am much obligated to you. I cannot treat you as ordinary devotees. Do not think that I was away from you. I was, ne I was near to you. I was simply seeing. I was simply seeing how much you were anxious for me in my absence. So please try not to find fault in me if I have done anything wrong. I cannot repay your your continual love for me, even though out of the lifetimes of the demigods and the heavenly planets, it is impossible to repay you or show gratitude for your love. Therefore, please be satisfied by your own past activities. You have displayed exclamatory actions for me, attraction for me, overcome by the greatest difficulties arising from family connections. Be pleased, be satisfied with your highly exclamatory character for it is not possible for me to repay you by de your debt.
said that Krishna has become so many, but Krishna was so tricky. No affluence there was. Krishna never became so many, but he was dancing and moving in so quickly, like a, what? Firebrand. Firebrand. That it looked like that, oh, he has been so much Krishna, like Every hope is in And from this Leela, Krishna oh, went to Mathura after this. But this Leela is past times, including all the Leelas in the Rasha Leela. And this Leela went on for uh, one night of Brahma. Moon was seen and he could not move yet. <laughs> Always. No. She was looking. And she forget to move. So you should try to know. Something has been told that really the gopis were not. Parkiya, there of Krishna. All were, were manifestations of one, bodily manifestations of Srimati Radhika. And Radhika is one with Krishna. Only to make Vilas and for uh, the jivas, souls, conditioned souls, Krishna played like this. That who will hear? this past times with affection and honor oh, they will have the praja preem. So you should if you have so much honor to read and to discuss about this you can hear the past sweet these past times. And thus by hearing 
what will be? All your head rog will go away. Bikriditam prajupatubhi idan chavishno shaddan vitanushuniyat atabarne ye daja bhakti param bhagavati patilapya kamam hidarog masu apihichar. Uh, like southern devotees. They think that we should chant and remember and our heart will be pure. And then uh, we should hear these things. Actually you cannot do. With honor if you rem what? remember these pastimes and hear from any superior Vaishnava with so much honor. Then, what will be first? Krishna Prem will come and your heart, disease will go away after. First Bhakti should come. As much as Bhakti will come, heart, rogue and every disease will go away. So this is the process. Not that, oh, we should make our heart so clear and pure. It will take lakhs and lakhs, but you cannot do like this. This is not possible. Where you are, you be there. But with very care, with honor, you should hear and remember the past, three past times of Krishna. You should not uh, do like Shajiya, imitate. imitate. <laughs> you should not uh, be Krishna. You should try to be like gopis and hear all these things. Then at once your all heart disease will go away and you will be pure devotee. Go Prama. You should try to develop and always remember all these things, to hear these things. Read Srimad Bhagavatam. Practice from beginning. Rupa Goswami teaching, um, Raghunath Das Goswami Manasikha, and from there you should be like this. Very strong devotees. This is our aim and object. My heart will blessings to all who are doing and who are hearing and who are here. So my blessings to all. Go Praman. Maharaj Ki. In the Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Maharaj Ki. In the Prabhupada Ki. In the Prabhupada Ki. In the Raj Ki. Go Premanande.
Yeah! 